Yes. Thank you for your presentation, Tom. And I really like your T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and here in Cameroon, we have um, the case of the Mount Bambutos. Mm -hmm. It's highly degraded. And I don't know, how can I have something like, like that can help me to see the habitat change? I, can I have image from Mount Bambutos from land cover? Is it possible? OK, so to get a historical view, it depends on the time span that you want. And essentially, as you want to go farther back in time, it gets harder. Mm -hmm. OK? So for example, if you want an analysis of landscape change, vegetation cover change, since 2000, the last 15 years, very nice satellite series and very um, information-rich imagery is available. It's free, it's easy, you know, the only problem is bandwidth to download it. Um, if you want to go back farther than that, for satellite-based imagery, you can go back approximately to 1975 or, 19, or 1980. So that's still almost 40 years. So that takes you a fair ways back. Um, the easiest source of that information is Landsat. And I think we're on, what, the third or fourth Landsat satellite? Seventh, eighth, yeah, whatever. Um, so you can't necessarily control the imagery quantitatively, but at least qualitatively, Landsat imagery has a spatial resolution of 30 meters. So you can detect contra contraction of forest patches, things like that. Um, now, you say, I want to go farther back. Um, it gets harder and harder. I don't know for Africa, but I do know for South America that are, there are big um, aerial photography series. And those go at least back to the 1950s. Okay? So now we're getting pretty far back as far as vegetation change goes. Um, the thing is, those may not be available online. You'll have to probably talk with geographers about where are those held, do those exist, and where are they held. But essentially, aerial photography is your hope for going back 50 to 70 years. And then the hardest one are these archives of kind of occasional photographs. But if it's a place that is at all iconic, I mean, certainly Mount Cameroon, there are, I'm certain there are paintings that go back hundreds of years yeah. and photography that goes back a hundred years. Because if you come to this part of the world, you're going to take that picture or you're going to make that painting. It's spectacular, okay? Um, to find the field note archives that are associated with specimens of whatever taxon you're interested in, <coughs> There, the challenge is really hard. Essentially, what you need to do is figure out where those specimens were deposited. So it might be the British Museum, it might be uh, the French National Museum, whatever. Then you have to figure out whether any of those, those um, collectors was also keeping good notes. And that involves writing letters, visiting museums, I'm guessing that when Dave does his museum visits in Europe, he's not just looking at the herps, but also looking at all the, uh, the documentary information. Okay, so that gets hard, um, but sometimes you find the gold mine. I hope so. Yeah. Can I ask an associated question? Yeah. If what if, you, if you're not necessarily interested in a specific taxon, you're just interested in how landscapes changed over time? Is it, I mean, there are techniques to digitize old photographs or even, you know, the, Im the paintings and imagery in such a way that you would, s would be able to make those, take, take your modern photos right. and detect those changes as well. Yeah, so you, you can, so Kate's asking or commenting that um, you can also just overlay two photographs regardless of the taxonomic interest. It is true. But there are, but there are ways to, di you know, to digitize those objects and actually turn it into a, a more spatially explicit... Yeah, essentially you're, you're geo-rectifying yeah. one photograph to another and then those to the landscape. Exactly. It's very doable. 
uh, for these photographs that I showed you, it ended up being very interesting because it was the difference between a camera eye and a human eye. And what we found was that the painter was extremely faithful to the landscape, but that, you know, I can look, let's see, I'm gonna, I can look here and I can see Rafe, Kate, and Yanko all in focus. And even though Rafe's head looks bigger and Kate's head looks somewhat smaller and Yanko's a little smaller than that, my eye and my brain are interpreting the fact that they're all the same size. And so what we found was that the painter's eye was, was modifying some shapes and dimensions and the perspective. Uh, so it does get complicated even between different photographic equipment. But the possibility is there, and particularly if people are taking you know, the same view. Like if there's a, you know, a classic place Overlook. where you could see Mount Cameroon or a, you know, a scenic overlook along a road, many times you'll get the same picture taken. And what I'd like to do with these photo archives is challenge people to find exactly the same mm -hmm. view. And you know, that sometimes involves jumping over the fence into the live fire range. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's the challenge. I thought Tom's presentation earlier just about the, photo, uh, the paintings and resurveying and looking at landscapes was just really cool and is something that I've been interested in as well. And just to show you that there are these resources for Africa and they are in color and they are 60 years old. You just have to spend a lot of time looking for them. So we recently came, uh, um, came into possession through a daughter of a field biologist that worked in Eastern DRC, what was then Belgian Congo in the late 1940s, of a bunch of color photographs of what the Atambwe Plateau uh, looked like in about 1948. And these are type localities for species, right? Species that haven't been seen since then. And these are probably in landscapes. These are landscapes that are pre-conflict, pre-independence, these landscapes probably don't look quite like this anymore, right? So it's a great opportunity for us to use these as a basis and go back and see what does the landscape look like, how has it changed, what species are there. And even, you get little bits like this, it's hard to make out, but these are the field assistants. You can see five guys here all carrying shotguns going off into this little patch of forest. And even your photographs that you take can be useful years later. So we actually just use these photographs here to uh, elevate this species in Ornata from a subspecies to a species because the specimens, there are only three, two of them are lost, one of them is basically in such bad shape it's hard to look at, but having these original color photographs that have data on the slide in this case enables us to go back and actually say, oh, in fact, you know, this seems to be a valid species. Um, and we're actually using that in a species description we're publishing now for a related species. So these data can be really important to you. So just think about your data as being important to someone in 70 years.